So I did try or I did read the majority of Tinker Tailor Soldier. I always forget the spy. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy by um, John Licade. I need to look that up to confirm. Is that really how you pronounce his name? Okay. I'm so lazy sometimes. But anyway, this is, I think it's book number five in his uh, Smiley series. Smiley is a, uh, is George Smiley. He is a spy, a British spy, I believe that is, um, that carries about nine books or so in this series. And he works underneath this place called the Circus, which of course is like this Interpol, you know, interconnected web of espionage agents, spy agents, and intelligence. And you know what I'm saying. It's a hive. It's a hive, right? So what's taking what's occurring in this particular book is that there is a counterintelligence um mole within the circus. And it's George Smiley's job who has been actually sort of um, excised from the circus. It's his job to uncover who exactly is this mole or really lead up the treads as to who, you know, getting up to the top of who this mole is, which is a person who has identified as, identified as Carla. All right. So here we go. Now, I've read a couple of... Uh, this author's books before especially um the coldest i'm saying the coldest the uh spy who came in from the cold um and of course last year i read the little drummer girl and the little drummer girl actually had a cameo by Sm george smiley in it so what was the problem or the issue or the roadblock that i continuously hit within this book to the point where i just could not exactly stay focused after 100 pages and begin to skim until probably about the last 100 pages, I just had to read those straight through because I feel like there was no information the information in between I really didn't kind of need. The roadblock block that I hit was that this is in the middle of the series. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot of references to Smiley's personal life, particularly with his marriage being dissolved, basically. Referred to in here. And that emotional baggage or... Um, place headspace that smiley's in that we the reader have to go through with him in regards to that that's been dealt out dealt dealt out in this book and the second part of that roadblock is smiley's professional life considering this is the book five in that series where a lot of the material that's referenced here has to do with obviously events that have taken place within the first four books so with that said i was dropped into the middle of this story and I think that that for the majority is where a lot of my problems came in because I did not know George Smiley other than that brief cameo or so that he had in The Little Drummer Girl. Had I read the series from book one on to book five, a lot of this stuff would have flowed like water for me. It would have made perfect sense and flow easily. So I had to try my best to kind of um, compartmentalize the fact that I didn't have all this detailed backstory information about this character although some of it was like an anecdotal form or ref like I said reference here as the story plotted on that just wasn't enough that was not enough and that being the issue or the roadblock that I had was the reason why my sort of investment in the story waned away after the first 100 pages it kind of dissipated. I just couldn't fully grasp that person, all that baggage information that kept coming up, coming up, coming up. And another thing that kind of was the issue is that because this is a story where we're, you know, they're trying to figure out who has two faces in the circus, you know, we're doing a lot of tracing and tracking or whatnot. To me, honestly, the ideal candidate for flipping the tables as being a part of the sort of um, oppositional force. I'm using some words here to try to skate around a lot of stuff. That person was kind of introduced to me or it was kind of clear that that individual or the core uh, root of where Smiley's detecting or espionage uncovering of this spy agent or mole, it was in the prologue, in the first half of the book, you know. That's just so how, excuse me, that's just so how out of place that chapter read that 
by the time I said, you know what, I can't deal with this middle section. I'm tired of going over a certain amount of things. I'm not fully invested. When I said, let's go ahead and just skip to the end and get to that part and just see who it was because I'm not invested at all. And I do not want to fight my way through this. I'm not. When I get done with this book, it's going to be donated. That my what I thought was was true, was true, was it happened, it was absolutely true. What I thought from the beginning, when I first read the first 100 pages to the last 100 pages, it proved to be true. So that was my experience reading this book. And I just want to say that for a because this author is really good, though. It's just that that was not enough, you know. Well, my fair warning is that if you ever decide to read these books, it's probably for many people, it's probably best to read them in order. Because, I mean, it was heavy on backstory, both the personal, like I said, and the professional of this George Smiley character. And that was, it was tough. It was tough. Like I said, if I have to, if I got to the point where after the first 100 pages I was bored and I was like, I don't want to read this big chunk. I just want to know who did it, what's happening, resolve this issue, and then get rid of this book off my list. Then that was the issue. So I am interested in going back and reading like the first book and trying to probably proceed forward, but it won't be anytime soon and it will be checked out from the library. So that was my experience reading Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Okay, so after I ended up reading Tinker Tailor Soldier, I ended up having some further trouble. Further, further trouble, which this fared a lot worse than Tinker Tailor Soldier, reading Dashiell Hammett's The Thin Man, which is the first book in his Nick and Nora uh, uh, Golden Age de detective fiction, hardball detective fiction series, based in like 1930s. Nick and Nora are a married couple. I believe Nick is a detective and there's his wife, Nora, who, uh, you know, she's helps him out on the job. You know, there's that banter, that dynamic, you know, I love one particular scene where Nora, Nick had to, Nick knocked Nora out, but Nora wanted to stay, you know, conscious enough. You know, I'll get to that part of another day. But she wants to stay conscious enough to see him attack a bad guy. So she was upset about that. So there is a fair amount of humor in that. But unfortunately, I didn't find any, too much humor in it at all. This book to me, and y'all are probably going to be like, oh, Gasp, it was boring. It was so boring. It was just boring. Now, I did like the Maltese Falcon. For some reason, that kind of pulled me in. Maybe that's because that's one specific detective. I'm really not sure. But the Thin Man was boring to me. There were a lot of characters besides Nick and Nora. You know, there just wasn't. An, I just could not get a grasp of the characters. There just wasn't an, enough details to keep me invested in anything, in anybody, in the story. And like a lot of these detective stories, there's always this one girl. It's either like a wife. Or a young lady or late teens, early 20s, who is the one that is asking for help. Or like the wife is missing or the wife, you know what I'm saying? Like that thing. And that just was like, ugh. I'm just, I was just like, God, Lee, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about this. Like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. But that's kind of the case. There's this girl, this young lady or 20 year old woman or something like that. She comes to them, to Nick asking for his help. In finding her father, um, her father Nick gets in contact with the father's lawyer, and they subsequently try to find him. And then there's a death, a murder, a woman that's murdered in the I believe her father's office. Yeah, I, hardly invested, hardly invested. I sat at a cafe after work and read the first 50 pages in the book, and I could hardly keep focus. So my experience reading The Thin Man was not great at all. Um, and I I got that kind of sense that if after maybe about three days, I was just like, I'm still in this book and there's no need for me to be hanging in here when it just doesn't have that sauce or that savory taste, reading taste to me to keep me here, to keep me picking it up constantly throughout three days and where I'm skipping days when not reading. It's, it's a let go and I, I'm cool with that like I'm absolutely cool with that I'm crossing it out of my list and I'm just like I just don't want to do it so the thin man didn't work for me guys I'm, it just is what it is the thin man did not work I was bored just like by reading the Philip Marlowe books you know being that 
horrible detective fiction you know it's the golden age it's one of the pioneer forces the one of the grandfathers of that genre, sub genre although it is what it is it read too much like a caricature at this point so yeah the thin man was in, was okay and then i did read i read the first 50 pages then i read the last 50 pages and still i was just like i was unfazed unmoved unmotivated for more so I'm just one of those unfortunate souls that just don't get it with that sub genre and I'm okay with that because I don't need to so that is it I just want to share those essentially they are fails I think they are fails well I think the the uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier was a fair success I really gave it a fair shot but the thin man was just like uh, they were fails I think another issue that I had is that I was so compelled by the Nine Tailors by Dorothy L. Sayers that it's just like it's I'm not I'm not recovered fully from that. But anyway, that's it. Thank y'all for joining me here. If you have any thoughts and opinions about the books, I will welcome more than welcome them in the comment section below. And I am gonna continue on my list. I'm gonna continue on my list, and I will be sharing hopefully a TBR of what I got coming up next. It's gonna be some of this. Okay. I got to go. Bye.